week 21 of another podcast. We're here again. I keep forgetting to do this. If you're watching, please like and subscribe and leave a comment so we know that you watch. It keeps us motivated. It's more fun to think that uh, there's actually people listening to us instead of just us listening to us a few days later. Um, but yeah, week 21. We're here again. <laughs> okay. So we have this hot takes game yep. uh, out in front of us. And I used to think that this hot takes game wasn't very hot takey. But you just found a good one? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? The first one I drew was, <laughs> uh, you should delete your ex's nudes from your phone. That's not even... Uh, of course you should do that. I think, yes, that is the correct that. move to do. That's, a, that's the problem with kids these days. I would go into more detail, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> don't are you, are you trying to tell me that your, ex, that the your ex-boyfriends have a bunch of your nudes out there and that, no, and that you me. wish you wouldn't have sent them? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's the next one? <laughs> Uh, well, we know this is true. Playing too many games will make you dumber. Uh, no, I don't think so. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. You sure? What are you, are you trying to say something? But I'm not implying anything. Do you feel stupider for all the video games you played as a kid? I'm saying that I think I play less than you. I only play on Wednesdays. <laughs> don't you? Don't you have like a day that you play games? No. I thought you had like a like a. A thing that you did with Randy. Yeah, yeah, we used to do D and D, but we just kind of sit and run, and hang out. Okay, now. board games and video games are the exact same thing. Are are they really? Also, okay, this are this, they really? They are, are they the same really? thing. This actually takes me to a hot take. So I, okay. I've seen a lot of uh, people say that they don't want their kids to play video games, but they're perfectly fine with putting their kid in front of a screen and watching, you know, Bluey or 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 some kind of Disney movie. That has to be worse. Well, there is no difference. You like, why, why does video games get such a bad, bad take or whatever? Because watching movies and playing video games are the exact same, except for whenever you're playing a video game, you're problem solving. You're like, how can I beat this level? How can I get over this tall wall? <laughs> and you got to think okay. and come up with a solution. Like, I am joking, but it does sound like an alcoholic talking about why booze is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, no, listen, let me tell you what. When I'm drunk, I drive better and I, I sing, sing better. better. Yeah, yeah. I'm great at karaoke. The girls are prettier. I care about stuff less. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, I actually, I kind of think you're right, though, because there's a part of me that whenever I go home, the, the, the thing is, is, like, I sometimes I wish I could play video games. Like, like, man, tonight it would be a really good night to PlayStation. Yeah. You know, and I'll sit down and I'll be like, I'm too lazy for that. Netflix. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I mean? I see. So the effort yeah. to grab the controller and and put some mind time into solving a it's video It's the brain game thing. Problem. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to do work. <laughs> I don't want to do work. I don't want to do work right now. I just want right to sit on the couch. I just want to Netflix and chill. Yeah, so if you, like, the idea of the Bluey versus Superman 64... I mean, you don't want to play Super Nintendo. Uh, let's say Bluey against, like, No, Mario. I mean, like, as a kid, I had the fortitude to be like, I have to figure out how to beat right. the worst game of all time. Like, <laughs> and I, like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so I was, like, like, getting, like, real frustrated. But, like, I remember I learned some crazy things from video games back in the day because back in the day, games were hard. Games are hard now too. They are. Yeah. I don't know. So I feel hard. like they nerf games now. They're like either because you can just breeze through every campaign. Yeah, there's definitely games that are like that. I never beat the volcano level of Sonic and Knuckles. I got to that level and never beat it. And I really? knew that there was three other levels after that. And I was like, well, I'm at the peak of my abilities and I can't beat this. I'm sure I never. I don't think I ever beat Sonic either. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, uh, video games now I, I do get overwhelmed by them because there's a lot of them are so big now that yeah. it, in order for you to really get like the full experience you have to pump like a hundred hours into a game yeah that's crazy and i don't really have the time for that anymore but i wish i did like did you ever play skyrim yeah it was an amazing game oh that game i didn't even scratch the surface on it and i was like this is incredible is but a, yeah. i'm never gonna <clears throat> yeah but I, I didn't have the time to like you know skyrim is exactly what i it's 
They should do a Skyrim mod. I'm sure it already exists, where it's just the characters from Monty Python. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I've seen that. No, that'd be Skyrim. <laughs> and like the dialogue is yeah, Monty Python. Yeah, dialogue. it's just Monty Python, guys. <laughs> What's one of the lines? That would be... <laughs> like the coconut guy and they're just, and they're just walking yeah. and then the guy that chops his arm off it's just a flesh wound yeah 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 or like the French guy who's like like just talking shit to them from the top of the castle oh, like that's so funny it was so like funny. if I was playing a game where it was just the Monty Python guys and you go to the castle and the guy's like you know talking French to you ah he's farting in my general direction you know <laughs> yeah. You have to go kill the rabbit at the end. That'd be crazy. It'd be a, such a funny, <laughs> be a fun game. Oh, um, uh, like they're really anyways. missing it. But yeah, but so, but uh, Skyrim does actually vibe like that because the guy, you know, you, t it's lit. That game is so big that it probably took them so long to do all that stuff mm -hmm. that there was a guy who was in charge of like recording dialogue for characters and like he was like next and the person comes in and they're like what what am I reading for Oh yeah, you're a guy. At a stable in a, in a town, and you shovel pig crap. <laughs> I what? Yeah, yeah, that's your character. C can you can you say <laughs> can you say, hey, get out of my pig stable? <laughs> and like he hits record, and then the guy's like, hey, get out of my pig stable. <laughs> that's great. Next, and like that's how they got all the dialogue because sometimes. Sometimes you're like playing Skyrim and it's just like a guy like, hey, get out of my pig stable. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a medieval guy. You're, or like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. All the different character names. Or like you clearly it's the same guy from another guy. Oh yeah, that, that would happen a lot. Yeah, that, that's same funny to me. That means there's a everything. one guy in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, who am I now? Yeah, you're like a lizard guy. <laughs> like wizard, lizard. You're the wizard lizard. Like, Anyways. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna use my magic on you. <laughs> Anyways, the take that video games are worse than movies is bad. It's a bad take, and everybody that thinks that should stop thinking it. Wow. That's what I think. Oh. It's a hot take. We're playing a hot take. I gave my hot take. It's my hot take. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Because literally, I watch my son whenever he's watching a, watching a movie. It's just this. <laughs> but when he's playing a video game, he's like, okay, how am I going to solve this? <gasps> no! Yeah, yeah, there's, so. some, there's something else going on there. Uh, gym class should be removed from school. Uh, my brain can't pronounce this word. Yeah, we'll move on. Yeah. I don't want to look like an idiot. I'm going to try one more, though. Jared. Uh, diet culture is toxic. Diet culture? No. Being super fat's toxic. Okay, but also this is true. It is? It? Is it? I think so. Oh yeah, talk to me. Because uh, there's been multiple times I've been on social media, yeah, and somebody will say to me like, through the phone, eggs are bad. Oh yeah. And then you scroll, and all of a sudden there's another guy, go another guy going, eggs are good. And mm. I've come to the conclusion that nobody really knows what is good or bad for us at this point. It's like, mm. you eat it. We talked about this a little bit, I think, when we went to lunch. Mm. You eat it, you feel like crap. You eat it, you feel good. That's basically how you tell if, if the food you're eating is good for you or not. Because everybody else sure. doesn't know what they're talking about. There's so much information out there that contradicts the other person, and it goes back and forth constantly. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, no, run it by me again. Nobody knows what's good or bad for us when it comes to food. Oh, yeah, yeah, no one. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm full on with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, does your stomach hurt or does your stomach not hurt? And if your stomach doesn't hurt, it's probably good for you. I think you're probably right. Because there's so many people out there that just that say that, like the other, I, I saw another video of this guy saying, fruit has more sugar in it than chocolate does. So eat chocolate, not fruit. <laughs> like this, that's insane. Yeah, no, that, that cuts out all the dietary fiber from, yeah. from the... The fruit that you're getting it's right. good for you. So, Yeah, there's yeah. this scientist that said uh, grapes have so much concentrated sugar in it mm. that it's worse for you than, like, Hershey's chocolate. Possibly. Grapes but it's got to be like... Grapes are particularly bad for you. Bad Compar for you? Comparatively speaking. 
to compared to like other fruit. Like if you were going to eat an apple, like there's so right. much more fiber in an apple and so much less but sugar. But still, yeah. a grape compared to Hershey's chocolate. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of a hard. That's kind of a hard to believe. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah, there's probably more nutrients in the grape. Right, and it's like natural sugar. Natural sugar is better for you than processed sugar. I mean, the ha- I, mean, I, 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 I would say I can't I would think. hardly think about the food thing because everybody's got a piece of my brain on it. Well, that's what, that's my point. Is yeah, it, is like, everybody has. I'm a- terrified about food mainly because, like, geopolitical reasons. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid afraid of food. I love food, I but like, but I'm so afraid that like, man, I, I I'm almost at the point where like I'm giving up. Like, I'm not gonna have good nutrition because I can't get it because all of our food supply is not. It, highly it, processed it, yeah it's, it's highly processed or it's grown with like chemicals and yeah means that i don't have any control over so i just try not to think about it yeah i mean it comes to a point you know where your body just starts to get used to it mm-hmm. it's like if you're an alcoholic and you drink alcohol every single day the more you mm. drink it the more you need to, to get drunk because oh, your yeah. body's been trained to handle whatever like chemical. you drink to get rid of the hangover yeah, or or, yeah. Th- or that or something. You know, your body gets used to what your habits are. Mm. And so it'll, you know, kind of morph into what it, what it needs to be in, in whatever situation you're putting it in. Yeah, that is wild. I eat better than I used to. Yep. For <clears throat> sure. And now I'm really like, I listen to my body more. Yeah. In fact, that's something that, uh, that, our, that our friend from high school helped you steal the chicken you know used to try to try to say to me a lot when we were growing up was like you need to listen to your body mm-hmm. um and i and i wish i'd have understood what she had meant earlier than that because now i do now i like oh wow i ate that and i'm screwed today because i right. ate like like we ate that chinese food the other day yeah no yeah i was like oh finish him <laughs> yeah yeah that's like that's a sure sign that's like all right maybe Maybe that food's not the best for me. Yeah. Like if I eat lunch and then want to just take a nap. Yeah, no, pro- I can't be probably, right. Probably not that yeah, good that's for me. probably not, not the move. <laughs> that's crazy. We went to lunch and I felt so motivated that yeah. day. Like I was like, okay, I'm going to get this done, this done, this done, this done. Yeah, and no, you're like, no, Jerry, no. you want to go to lunch? I love lunch. Let's go yeah, to lunch. Lunch is great. Went to, it went to eat lunch, ate the lunch, and after lunch I was like, I want to do absolutely nothing now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just killed my motivation. It's the communist Chinese coming after us, <laughs> trying to keep us from getting anything done during the day. <laughs> gonna sell us that food. They're gonna make money, and they're gonna <laughs> and they're gonna make the us rest lazy. of your afternoon. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, I was curious this week. Do you think you could pull out two scenarios from your life? I don't pull out or two. But <laughs> you probably should. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's just thousands of like little kids look just like me. <laughs> they all play bass and have little curly, like <laughs> curly haircuts and like little mustaches. And they, where's my dad? And they they go out in the world. I don't pull out either. <laughs> So now it's just like a whole army of you that you're unaware of. <laughs> What's with the kids these days? <laughs> They're all like me. They're like denim jackets, like all of them. <laughs> where, are they, where are they coming from? <laughs> oh, <my> God. Uh. <laughs> Anyways. What were you trying to say? I was trying to say... Uh, can you pull out? <laughs> that just—I didn't mean to use that phrase again. It's just what my brain wants to use to. to I could. What I'm trying to say. Ugh. But uh, I don't. <laughs> could, can you think of two scenarios before you die? Oh my god! Can you think of two scenarios in your life? No. One, I want you to 
Think of the funniest experience you ever had. Okay. That's hard. Okay, the most recent you, one. You understand, like, there, we have these things that were so funny between yep. us that no one will think is funny okay. at all. But, yeah. What is one of your most embarrassing moments? Embarrassing? Or maybe it do doesn't even have to be you, you as the one that got embarrassed, but an embarrassing moment that you were around. Oh, I'll tell you my most embarrassing moment. Yeah, tell me. Is... There was, a, I had a friend, this is back in the day. I still have, this is my, still my friend. But uh, this is like horrid, actually. This but. is like so embarrassing, it's like beyond embarrassing. Okay. Um, I don't know how I phrased it, but me and this guy, we were good buds. We still are incredibly good buds. So this is like, the, the, we, we recovered from this in our friendship. And uh, his wife, at the time, we were all good buddies, and we were always joking around, and da, da 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 And so, like, I'd put something up on Facebook, and then she'd probably, like, make fun of me for it, and yeah. I'd see it, and I thought that was funny. So we were razzing each other, and everybody was razzing each other. And I said something offhanded that I didn't really understand uh, what they were going through. I can't even remember how I said it. But turns out they were having trouble having kids and they were really trying to have kids. Mm. And I made some sort of joke that I can't remember. I can't remember how I said it or what I had said, but it was like the exact wrong thing to say. Oh, God. Like the worst I could have possibly said. And I'm like, oh, my God, how did I manage to use words the worst I could possibly use them ever? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can't remember exactly what the circumstances of it was, but I just remember for weeks being like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I had no idea. And furthermore, right. like, I didn't even mean to make that joke that way. Right. It just, you know what I mean? Ooh. So that's probably about as embarrassed as I've ever been. Makes sense. Yeah, and it wasn't embarrassed. Like, I would much rather have been like, you know, I don't know, somebody pants me in front of the high school class and everybody <laughs> sees my dick. Like, I mean, I, like, <laughs> that, much, that would be so that much than, better. Like, than, than that. I mean, I understand. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, like, like, uh, is, ugh. but yeah, what was, what was really graceful about them, though, is both of them were like, hey, man, we know that you didn't mean it like that. Right. Like, and they were very graceful to me. And I, that actually makes me really excited because I feel like true friends especially if you want to have a, a good time and you want to be able to cut up and make mistakes, make and, jokes and yeah. have fun, is that you have to realize that, hey, we're going to make mistakes, yeah. making jokes and having a good time and being fun. And that that's part of it. You know, yeah. and they were very graceful, you know, and they, they, they wanted me to know, hey, it's all good, man. Like, the, yeah, yeah, the friendships that last are the ones where you can feel like you can screw up and not lose the friendship. You know what I mean? Right. Someone that sees you, uh, sees the best mm -hmm. in your worst situation. So, well, in that case, then, then what that means is that if that's what you want from your friends, if that's what you want around you, you have to be that way. Yeah. That means equally parts being sensitive and growing tough skin. Right. And going like, I want joy in my life. I want joking. I want razzing. I want that to be in my world. So... I have to open that space for that, mm -hmm. you know, and get ready to be razzed and joked with and yeah. whatever else, you know. Yeah, your story reminds me of my or of an embarrassing moment for me. It's not as bad as that one. It was very George Costanza. <laughs> yeah, that one was Jerry. Bad. I didn't mean it. There's like no funny in that. Yeah, it's yeah. Just like, oh my god, Donnie, wow. Why did you? Do you that? made a joke like a like I don't know. I can't even remember what the context was, but it might as well have been like yeah, it didn't yeah doesn't matter really I mean, it's just yeah. like because that that's definitely a sensitive topic but uh yeah uh the thing that i did it's kind of not not along that yeah. not along the lines that much but it is i'm an idiot not as <laughs> not as stupid as you but uh, I, I did something stupid I, yeah but not that stupid yeah no um so there is this i was at my sister's wedding yeah victoria and she was talking about her her friend Katie and how she's like eight months pregnant and everybody mm -hmm. you know help Katie blah blah blah, blah make sure she's good and taken care of she's far along in her pregnancy we're like all right cool uh, so I'm outside 
um, mm. like putting chairs up and p- putting tables down for mm-hmm. the reception. And then her friend Katie walks in, mm-hmm. and I asked her, "Hey, you're pregnant, aren't you? How far? Don't be moving those tables. Yeah. I got this." Mm. And then she looked over at me, like this, mm. and and I go, "Are you, are you pregnant, Katie?" She goes, "No." She had two two friends named Katie. I go, oh my god, I'm sorry. I was talking about the other Katie, not you. And she, and this the, the Katie that is not pregnant goes, I'm about to cry real hard. I'm about to bawl my eyes out. It's like I'm sorry. No, the only reason you don't look pregnant is just it's because Victoria said she had a friend <laughs> named Katie that was pregnant. You don't look pregnant. I'm sorry. And my wife was standing right next to me, and as soon as soon as this situation started happening. Happening. She just turned and left. Oh She's my like, nope. god! Split too, too much. Too this much for is too, me. Too much I'm awkward out. for me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Uh, it was not. <laughs> it was not a fun moment to live in. Yeah. I asked a girl that wasn't pregnant how far along she was. She's Something. like, what? She didn't this, look, she legit. This is a Chipotle burrito. She was wearing a big hoodie. She didn't look pregnant. I just was told that there was someone named Katie that was pregnant. And so I made a mistake. You know. I make mistakes. I, I think you're fine, dude. Yeah, maybe. I think you're fine. You think I'm fine? Yeah, I'm like, part of me is like, hey, Katie number two, get over it. <laughs> I mean, I in all... I understand. In all due respect, Katie right. number two. Katie, do you look pregnant? Do you really look? What? What do you? She didn't look pregnant. Yeah, yeah. That's my point. It's like yeah. Katie. Like let's 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 look, Katie number two. Let's get congruent with reality. Yeah. Look at this dumb ginger here. Honest mistake. Yeah. <laughs> honest mistake. <laughs> <laughs> dumb ginger made an honest mistake and vomited some words. Oh yeah, no, that's that's how I felt too, though. And it was because we had this jovial open right. door right you the know. the razzing yeah you it's guys like, razz each other yeah like she was saying all sorts of dumb shit to me all the time so it's like <laughs> oops you know yeah but it was also like oh my god holy crap oh my god brain why'd you make me say that yeah words or mouth why didn't you stop it <laughs> i was like i'm not just I'm soon told <laughs> i was sick as a dog this week oh were you like completely blammed what happened? I got the flu. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. When I'm did not you get contagious. It? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I was. I was healed by Sunday. But uh, mm. no, I started getting sick on Wednesday. Oh, really? And I, uh, yeah, I, I, I had to sing this like Queen song. Okay, which one? Another one bites the dust. Oh wow! So I pulled it off, but I started getting like all congested and stuff. Yep. Oh man, I'm getting ready to sneeze. Um, we kept doing that. I went through Wednesday, Thursday, knocked out. I had to cancel every one of my students. I was like, I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm done, so. And I slept Thursday, Friday, like a little bit, basically all day. Really? Yeah, I just had people come by, deliver me stuff. Just use DoorDash all week? No, I mean my my parents drop by oh, something I see. every once in a while and. Mandy dropped by uh, some medicine, so it was really good. But um, yeah, I ended up like going like days, days. I had to cancel my my class on on Friday, and then Saturday, I was like back. Yeah, but like wiped out, and so I rested all day Saturday, and then got up at five thirty on Sunday. And went all day singing that Queen song. Yeah. <laughs> at, at every service. Sang all six services. And then I basically crashed and slept almost the entirety of Monday, it felt like. And I had to get up and do stuff. I had to teach a class on Monday afternoon, and I was still foggy. And now today's Tuesday. But, like, it was, like... It sucks that you were sick, but it was it was probably pretty great that you got to sleep that much. Oh, it didn't. I mean, yeah, but I think your body keeps the score big. 
Like, if you don't get enough rest, if you're not slowing down, like, if you don't, that whole Sabbath thing, Mm -hmm. that is for real. And I guess maybe it's just because I'm getting older, too, but, like, I am now at a spot where I have to, like, right now I have something planned every single day of the week. And that is not going to last. Like, if I don't, like, I, just, I don't think I have anything going on on Saturdays right now, like, mm-hmm. committed to. So you're saying, like, you don't have a day where you just get to do nothing. Right. That's not good. But I have to have the nothing day. Yeah. And I only decided to get rid of my nothing day because somebody tossed too much money at me. Yep. And now I'm like, I don't know if there is an, a money amount that would keep you from doing that. It's funny, uh, yeah, in, in, in uh, the balance of life, like, you got to do something that is, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, satisfying, motivating, mm-hmm. something that makes you feel like you're accomplishing something. Mm-hmm. And then you got to put time into building and keeping your relationships, with whether that's your parents, your friends, your family, your kids. Mm-hmm. And then also you got to find time to just, like, relax. Right. I will... For my own sanity, I have to have some relaxed time. Oh, yeah. Because then I just start getting grumpy Mm -hmm. and hating everything. Yeah. If I don't have, like, a nice balance. Like, if I don't get to see my kids very often, I get a little bit sad. If if I'm not accomplishing something, I get sad. Right. And if I don't have a time to relax, I I get angry. Yeah. Same thing with sleep. Sleep, there's, like, a... There's, like, a... Like a certain amount of hours that I need. Not too much, not too little. Mm-hmm. If I get like six, maybe seven, I'm good. But if I get like 10, I'm still tired all day. If I get like mm. five and under, I'm yeah. tired all day. It's yeah, and that tired all day like equals that. you treating people in your life different. Yep. You don't want to do that. So, man, I'm, you know, I'm starting to figure it out. I'm also going to have to just, I think I'm going to, I like, I have this desire building inside of the back of my head now at this age that I'm like, I want to get, I don't want to get ripped. I'm like, yeah. I have to go get strong. Yeah, I need to do that. Like, sure. I have to go get strong, not ripped. I don't care about like, Ripped is not the thing. It's just like, if I don't go use my muscles, like, we're going to have problems. Yep. And it's so easy to not do anything. Yep. So, I'm like starting to think about like, I used to have a pretty regular workout routine that was that was like great um but i'm not at, i want it back now because i'm like man i remember it wasn't it wasn't two years ago that i was doing that I was Work, gonna, working out was like the hardest thing for me to be disciplined on yeah just don't like it very much no this, it's not fun but also like if you the kind of clarity mentally that you have when absolutely you, when you when you work out is like Oh, yeah. No, yeah, it definitely will put you in a good mood for the rest of the day mm-hmm. if you put in the effort to go exercising. That's what, that's what my wife, she talks about that all the time. It's like she's just in a better mood if yep. she makes time to go exercise. Yeah. And I can tell a huge difference in her, like, mindset, her uh, emotions whenever she gets to have that time mm. to go work on herself. And, yeah, same for me, but I just... Not as motivated <laughs> to, to stay with it as like she is, which I need to be. I need to be because I don't want my son growing up and being able to beat the crap out of me, and that might happen real soon if I don't do something. You know, <laughs> my my son he's pretty tall. He's only five, and he's. I think I think if if you it, look ten years from now, your son's fifteen, especially like like fifteen years from now, your son's twenty. Yeah, you better hope he can beat the crap out of you. Yeah, because you're gonna be what? I just don't want him to be able to at like 14. Yeah, you'll be you will be 50 years old. When my son is 14, that is no. When your son is 20. Oh yeah, when he's 20, I will be yeah. No, I'll be 47. Oh, okay. Well, either way. Yeah. Wait, your son is five right now. Mm-hmm. And you're 35. I'm 34. Okay. Well, doesn't matter. Math. <laughs> doesn't matter. Math. Oh. Let's see here. Girls should get extra sick days for their periods. I, I'm not going to have a take on that. But I do. 
Okay. Yeah, I'll hear. Sure. I'll listen yes, to yours. They should. Why not? Okay, they're sure. sick. Yeah. Yes, give it to them. Yes. Yeah, let them have it. Give give them whatever they want. Thank you for continuing the human race. Thank you for birthing people. Oh my God! So glad you're doing that. Are, are, yeah. <laughs> I would suck at it. I would. I would. I'd cry constantly. <laughs> Just with the idea that this human's gonna come out of me. Oh, I get it. I get it. I, I'm glad. I'm glad I don't have to. I'm glad I'm a man. Glad you're a man. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want to be a woman. No, I'm glad I'm a man. You wouldn't want to be a woman. Get assets. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. If you knew, if you knew what it was like being a guy, and then you were like a hot girl, you would destroy. You you would obliterate everywhere. You just knew how to be like, mm, okay, okay, sugar. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Like, man, like the like the waitress at the diner that's like nice to you. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, like just a little bit of that butter me up, yeah. bologna, and I'm tipping you too much. Yeah, yeah. We're pretty easily manipulated. Yeah, you know we have to be vigilant to be like, no, nah, not not today, <laughs> not today, not today, woman. Think with the right head. Think with the right head. <laughs> <laughs> My wife can swim faster than me. Really? I believe that. She can hold her breath longer than me, too. Yeah? Yep. But I can beat her at Mario Tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. <laughs> Take that. This is for all the boys. <laughs> <sighs> what are you going to tell your daughters? What am I going to tell my daughter? That yeah. she can do anything? What I... Actually, my daughter is I, I'm, I'm probably biased but i think like the cutest little girl i've ever seen not only that but she is so charming and like a, like attentive yeah and knows how to say words that make people's day better mm. the other day i was having a rough day and i came home and indy runs to the door mm. goes daddy mm -hmm. and she like does it every single time yeah and then throughout the next few hours, she would just randomly walk up to me and go, Daddy. I go, yeah? You're the best. Oh. <laughs> oh, baby. Baby, you're the best too. Thank you so much. Yeah. And she did that like four or five times just within a couple hours. And you're like, well, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. What do you, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. You want some ice cream? Let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> tell me what you want. I'll get it for you. Nice. So what are you going to tell her, though? What are you going to tell her whenever she's, like, a teenager about about all this stuff, about about being an adult, about, I don't know, what, what people talk about these days, like women having a, you know, a, a worse lot than men. I'm going to tell her she can do whatever she sets her mind to. Yeah. That she's strong, powerful, smart. Yeah. Anything that you want to be, you can be. Yeah. I think that's true, and it, 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 even if it's not, like, if somebody told me, like, hey, you're awesome, you can do anything you want, you're a, you know, you're a, you're a powerful, sovereign human being, if somebody told me that, even if it wasn't true, even if I was like, I am stuck in a wheelchair, what are you talking about? Like, like even if, even if I didn't have every ability or endless, limitless potential, it could only help me to be a little delusional. You know what I mean? Like being a little delusional is good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. There's a certain level of like, I feel like there's a good level of narcissism about, not narcissism, but uh, a delusion of grandeur yeah. that you have in your mind that is really good for accomplishing cool things. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that I'm not the... I'm not as good of a musician as I think I am, most likely. But man, when I think of my peers for fun in my head, I'm like, oh, my peers are Freddie Mercury and mm. Paul McCartney. And uh, I put myself in that planet of like, that's the level, of, like, that's where I'm competing. Right. Like, I'm one of those guys. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's me. And it's not, uh, It's it seems 
stupid to say that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. those guys had to put their pants on one leg at a time, and they, yeah. you know, they shit their pants until they were three, like everybody else. So maybe after that. <laughs> yeah. 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 But but to me, um, that there's a good delusion. Whenever people tell you you can't do something, does that motivate you or demotivate you? Oh, motivate me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like uh, like you're motivated to prove them wrong, or you're you're motivated to. Like, what motivates you about it? Yeah, those are some odd things that have motivated me negatively and motivated me in a mm -hmm. positive way. Right. Um, there was this guy who, when I was younger, I was playing in a bar with my band, and a guy came and saw us who I really respected. Mm -hmm. Who, man, he was really something. Like he was, he was a big deal in Tulsa for a while. And he came to my show and he said, "Hey, why don't you come play with me?" Mm -hmm. And I did. I went and started playing for him um, at this gig, and we played a lot together. And I always thought, you know, man, that this guy was going to keep me under his wing yeah, and, like, help me, continue to help me grow and develop as a person. But at some point, he just kind of started ignoring me, like, stopped caring, you know, didn't really care to to, to pour into my life anymore. And it uh, really hurt my feelings in a way that I thought like, man, I thought that that guy thought of me like him. I thought that I was going to be like him and mm -hmm. that he saw himself in me like a young version of him and that he was going to help me be this like rock and roll guy like he was. And um, I don't know why. I didn't interest him anymore. I ended up, the only time I ever played Kane's Ballroom was for this guy. Um, but it, 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 I got sad about that at first, and then I got mad about it. And now, instead of either of those things, I'm like, hey, no, I have to be what I thought that guy was going to be for me for others. Yep. You know, like, I got to have to do that better. Mm -hmm. Like, one, he did get me started in a way that, like, he got me a gig and then, like, did actually bring me under his wing and did let me play around him and, and his cohorts and, like, got to play with some good players back then. <coughs> so I don't know what I was, pardon me, I don't know what I was asking for from him that he didn't actually already give me. Um, but other than that, um, if I didn't, if I didn't like that, or if I thought that he could have done better, or if I could have done better, that's just my job to be better at that. Right. You know? So, who knows? Um, but I guess, I don't know why we're talking about that much. What, I, what I, I asked you what what motivate like what motivates you about uh, people saying you can't do something. Oh yeah, like at some point somebody literally came up to me and said, "Hey, you're the new that guy." Oh really? Yeah, and that was the wildest thing. Probably like like one of that the, sunk in big. I was like, like what? a really awesome. Yeah. Compliment. Oh my god, they, they, you couldn't have told me something more motivating. It was like right. you're the new him, and I don't know if. Uh, Man, maybe maybe that guy didn't like me kicking around because maybe he thought I was a lot like him. Mm. Maybe he thought I was too much like him. Right. Or maybe he never thinks about me at all, and that's probably more like it. He probably <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. He probably has no idea how impactful <laughs> he was on my life. Right. At the time. A lot, yeah. Just that, like that whatever. Makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I get motivated uh, from both directions. Like if somebody tells me I can't do something, or they don't see like the vision of something I'm trying to work on. Uh huh. I get motivated to prove them wrong. Mm. And then whenever somebody gives me a compliment, like Jared, that was really funny, or Jared, that's that song is great, or Jared, mm -hmm. that podcast episode didn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> like that's motivating to me. It's like, all right, I'm on, I'm on to something. I've always been someone that uh, tries for for too long mm. to my benefit. 
for example, crypto. I got into crypto in 2017. Mm -hmm. I put 12 grand into it. In the first year, I made a lot of money. Mm. But then I got too greedy and lost most of it. And people were telling me, don't. Just mm. get out. Stop touching crypto. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. Like, but I was so, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, were you like really persistent? Per yeah, I was very persistent. I'm like, no, no, I see, I see the vision. And then I turned it into, into I, I was patient enough until it turned into something. Yeah. And like with this podcast, I like, I, I put probably 30 to 40 hours into just like content a week. It doesn't really produce much right now. It's mm. like, you know, 10 bucks a week maybe. And to a normal person that would look like I'm wasting my time. Mm. Or like, or they don't see the vision. Or like, Jared, you're like somebody said to me recently, like, Jared, you're entering into the podcast, uh, uh, like realm. It's inc mm -hmm. incredibly saturated. You're not going to go anywhere. And my thought was, who said that? I'm not going to. I'm not going to name names. But uh, uh, mm. my thought was, watch me. Yeah. Yes, I will. I'm going to stay persistent. I'm going to stay dedicated. I'm going to keep making $10 for, <laughs> for, for what? Five cents an hour for, <laughs> until this turns into something. Because it's a desire of my heart. And even though it, it's, not, it's not like producing a lot of money right now, right. it's still producing a lot of joy right. for me. Oh, yeah. Because I'm working on something that could potentially be something. Yeah. And just, I, I can't do a nine to five. It doesn't, it just... If I if I did, I would be miserable. Because mm -hmm. every single time I have done the nine to five, I was miserable, and right. I couldn't wait. And I would just look for reasons to quit. So, yeah, that stuff motivates me. To where, you don't think I can do this? Mm. And watch me. Yeah, that it. It really uh, things have shifted for me in in that realm of my life. Also. Wow, there's some really cool books that I've read that are uh, around that topic. Have you ever heard of The War of Art? The War of Art? Mm -hmm. Not The Art of War, but The War of Art. Mm. This guy named Stephen Pressfield wrote this book. It's incredible. And then he has this other book that kind of follows it up called Going Pro. And you would like both of those books a lot. I know you would. But um, what it takes for somebody to shift from well that would be a nice thing that'd be a good idea boy i'd i'd really like it if to yeah no i'm the guy who gets up every day and i i put on a bass guitar right like that's called going pro and to do that you have to overcome everything in your life telling you not to do that right including all of the people in your life that want to keep you where you are yeah in a box so, yeah in my world, what's funny is that I thought that I would have people telling me, don't be a professional musician. Right. I literally thought that I had people that would be disappointed in me for following my dream. That didn't happen at the start of it? No. No? Nobody did? Oh, here's what's funny is not only nobody did, nobody gave two shits what I was doing. That's the funnier part. Yeah, but I mean, your parents probably did, though, right? They wondered how long, why it took me so long. To just do, that's awesome. What awesome parents. But they literally were also the ones that told me not to do it. Uh, okay. So they said when what? I was a kid, they, they just a few times told me, hey, don't. Oh, I see. Okay. Don't be a musician. You should be something else. Right. And that, I took that, like, and I really listened to them. They, if they had known what they were saying when they had said it, they wouldn't have said it. But. Right. But I, but I listened to them, and then I became something else because they said so. They didn't mean to. Right. They, didn't, they, they, they don't remember saying it. Right. But they, they definitely did. Um, and then now they come on a weekly basis. They, they go to one of my gigs, and they'll, they'll, they'll show up, and I'll see them, and they'll be like, wow, yeah, no, that's, you killed that. That's great. You know, you know, or whatever. And it's like wild, you know. My dad sent me a text message this week that was like, 
you, hey, your your Queen cover was like spot on. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he said the, the, your harmonies in your band were great. I'm r- really proud of you, even though you were sick that you, you pulled that off. You know, a text message. Yep. Nobody nobody gets a dad move like that. I've been waiting my whole life to get my dad to say that. I was gonna say, is that yeah. like is that like your? I got lucky that my dad's still here. Is that like your I'm proud of you son moment or was there another one with your dad? Like was there was there one thing that he said to you that that sticks out more than anything as far as far as like a positive impact like Donnie like along the lines of like Donnie I'm proud of you like like something like that. Can you remember a moment like that? Yeah, my dad doesn't talk much. Right. So it's not it's not easy to he it's not It's been my brothers and I are both like this, I think, where we, um, our family wasn't verbal, wasn't good at talking about their feelings and communicating, yeah. so we were always trying to draw out what we needed from each other. Yeah. So trying to get dad to say something nice to you, trying to get mom to do, you know, you know what you need, and um, that was the way that we learned to, do, to be and do things, and that's backwards, because it doesn't count. Mm-hmm. Right, it only counts if your dad says something awesome and you didn't ask him. Hey, dad, wasn't yeah. that great? Right, no, you absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, and so, uh, I don't know, man. With I, I don't understand. I'm sorry, I lost track of your question a little bit, but with that feeling, it that's one of them, you know. Mm-hmm. I'll be really, I don't know what I'll feel. I don't know if I'll ever feel right about that. And maybe maybe that's the thing is that maybe you never really do because you have to give it to yourself. You can't mm-hmm. wait for your dad to give it to you. Mm-hmm. You can't wait for your outside influences of any kind to give you that. Like I've made this, like I've talked, I've talked so much about this album on our podcast, but like that's what I've been doing with my life. Mm-hmm. It's what I do every Tuesday night. When we get done with this, I go and I teach a handful of lessons and I go... Your band gets together on yeah, Tuesday nights? Yeah, and we, and we work until we can't, until we have to sleep. We work on this album. And uh, my whole life has been chasing rock music with beautiful harmony, like vocal harmony, mm-hmm. and beautiful melody. And it's because my dad loved the Beach Boys. It's because I was trying to get my parents to listen to me as a kid. Literally, that was why. And so now I've made this album that is like literally where the intersection of like Beatles, Queen, Beach Boys. So you had a lot of influence on the kind of music you're making. Oh, immense amount. And he doesn't even realize, he doesn't even know, you know. Has he, is there been a song that he's like, oh yeah, that's really good, Don? Yeah, that's a handful. Yeah, you know, there's like two or three that I know that he's like, Don, I really like that song. He's like, did you write that? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, oh, okay. So that probably felt good. Yeah, it does feel good. But it never feel, it never, and it doesn't fix anything. Right. What I thought, like I thought one day, like my dad liking one of my songs would be like the solve and it doesn't solve it. You still have to go home and look at yourself in the mirror. Right. I thought it was going to fix it. It doesn't. So let me yeah. make sure I'm understanding you correctly. Do you, do you wish that your family was more expressive or I don't or, or know you're, you're... I think I've grown to realize that that uh, I have to love myself and that I don't know if they if they are they aren't expressive enough they might they, they probably are okay great I don't know I, I certainly feel like I have a good family that's great like that's been good to me so yeah they're probably great um but as soon as I can learn to not need them, mm-hmm. I can just like it because I like it. Yeah. Which is what kind of where I'm at now. I think that's actually a good place to actually launch into making the art that I want to make because once this album is out and everything else, if my wildest dreams come true, if everyone loves this music and then there's this like, enough people that if a hundred thousand people give lonelies ten dollars a year and, <laughs> and then I can pay my people like above living wage and so they can quit everything and be lonelies 
if that happens, there's going to be so many people that are into it that I'm going to have to learn to ignore them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that there's, I think that there's this thing with, uh, with artists that if they get it in their heads that the audience wants something specific and they think they know what it is, then they'll shoot for it and it'll be total ass. Mm -hmm. Because what they really wanted was what you made because you liked it. Right. So, for me... Also, if you start making things, making or turning your art into not something that you like, but what you think other people will enjoy, you start to lose your motivation to keep doing it. Oh, yeah. There's no way I'll, I'll like it. Yeah. In order for you to maintain, you know, shooting for a dream mm. has to stay fun. Right. If you're like shooting for a dream and it's miserable, yeah. you're going to fail. If you're not enjoying the process, it's dead on arrival. Yep. Yeah, the, the, actual, the, the actual joy in the art is the making of it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Like there is no other reward like the idea that people are like, man, whenever all these people finally tell me that I'm great because of the thing that I do, I'll finally be happy. Well, guess what? That shit doesn't work. Because there's already, there's already enough people in the world that have told me that I'm great at what that I do. Right. And it always bounces off. That shit doesn't work. They'll walk up to me every gig. I'll have somebody walk up to me and be like, that was awesome. And I'll be like, go f yourself. What? In my head, it's not that I not that I'm mad at them. It's like you're lying to me. No, it was okay. It's okay. You know what but I mean? You, but you can't you can't do that. No, because, no, you no, can't. But but, but but let me let me say this because because people will stop saying it to you, and you'll and you'll start to notice after they stop saying it to you that you actually enjoyed whenever people came up and complimented you. This is actually thing. No, 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 no. I'm not I'm not I'm not angry or bitter at that. I know, I'm but you're, what you you're that... saying is it is their words don't mean much to you is what you're saying. No, it's right? a, that you don't believe them when they come. Right. Okay. Because you don't like it already. But if you if you do like what you're doing, then you don't take that bitterness out on them. What you do okay. is you go I see what you're you saying. go like, I agree with you. It did sound sick. That's because I actually like what we did. Okay. I see. You know That's what I mean? Yeah. But if you hate yourself then what happens is, is they come up to you and they say, that was awesome, dude. And or like, you, I love what you're doing. Yeah, and, and, you, and you'll and go, you well, I hate myself. So go. So whatever, it's not true. Yeah. What so, you're saying, so, I don't so, believe what you're saying to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. But that's, but that happens more often than you think. It happens all the time. It happens Absolutely. to like everybody. Like I was talking to somebody and I'm going to name names. Somebody I know met Aaron Marsh from Copeland. Okay. okay. You remember Copeland? Yeah. I love Copeland. They are beautiful sounding. What a cool band. I've traveled many, many miles late into the night to see Copeland, <laughs> you know? Um, well, a friend of mine met that guy and said he was so mean. Really? Like, so mean to him. Yeah. A little 16-year-old dude meets 30-something-year-old whatever, or I don't know how what the age discrepancy was at the time, but they met each other after a show and my dude was like, you mean everything to me. Like, your music's amazing. And the guy was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That sucks. Yeah. That it sucks. does suck. But that's not because... You, you think it's not because he's a jerk. It's because he doesn't like what he's doing. He doesn't like himself. He doesn't like himself, yeah. And it's clear. In the music, it's clear that Aaron Marsh probably doesn't like himself. Like, kind of songs that he's writing. Oh, my gosh. Like, who knows what kind of tragedy he's lived through to write those kinds of songs. And so I'm like, I'm not trying to, like, take a dump on Aaron Marsh. Right. But I am saying that in this moment, like, maybe Aaron Marsh's own self-hatred ended in him being mean to a kid at the end of a show. Yeah. That clearly was, like, his biggest fan. You know what I mean? Yep. I hope that every time, like, if it ever happens to me, I hope that I love myself enough to go, thank you, that makes me feel awesome, and if you're doing this, I bet you can do it too. You know one of the reasons why I, I, I heard this, I actually heard Gary V say this. Yeah. You know one of the reasons why Taylor Swift is as huge as she is? Why? Is because her fans will say things like, hey, come play at my wedding. Yeah. And then she'll actually do it. Really? They'll be like, hey, come to my birthday party. Yeah. And she shows up with a guitar. 
Yeah. Obviously, she doesn't do it to every single one. Yeah, it can't. But she does it butt. regularly, and yeah. people see that and go, "Oh my god, yeah. this borderline billionaire, yeah, is taking out a few days of her life mm. that, and just going and." Being at one of her fans' birthday parties. Yeah. It turns her, you know, people see her as not only a, a person that is great at music. Right. But is also kind. Mm -hmm. And, like, takes time out of her busy life to go to some random fan's wedding and play for free. Yeah. Clearly, sure. the, the, the ROI yeah. on that is not good. I mean, in the moment, is not great because she's not making money. She's just, like, going right. to this person's wedding. But in the long, the, 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 uh, Grand scheme of things, right? It has a huge effect on people liking her and buying her music and following her and, and listen, you know, yeah, becoming a super fan because she wasn't, she's not being, yeah. I think people like Taylor fan. Swift more than they like the music, uh, yeah. Because I'm, I'm I mean, sure I mean I'm, I'm not taking a shot at Taylor Swift, but I am gonna say that that music is simplistic, it's also pretty, I mean. It's it's not pretty catchy. Oh, yeah, it's not overly complex. It just is what it is. It's just Taylor Swift music. But I even kind of like Taylor Swift. I think she's great. Yeah, I have nothing like like I'm like I think she is the biggest you. artist in uh, currently. Yeah. She is the biggest artist currently with the biggest impact on everything. Uh, okay. She has like a like a whole army of super fans. That if you say one wrong thing about <laughs> Taylor Swift, you're gonna wring your neck. Ugh. I don't think. I. I mean, I don't know. I need probably need to dive in and actually listen to the music, but I don't feel like she knows what like a like a diminished chord is. But she writes her own music. I know she does. She's probably knows what a diminished chord is. Maybe. And if she doesn't know. It's because you shouldn't be using them. They're because great. People, because people Diminish like simple music. Great. If there's too much nonsense Diminish going on. is still in the key. If there's too much nonsense going on in the music, it's like, you know, we all have ADHD now. I mean, we don't actually, but that's what they call it or whatever, diagnose yeah. ADHD. Our attention spans are small. Yeah. And so if there's too much going on. <laughs> you know, there's this jazz like... artist, though. What's her name? She's this, you know, real... Jazz artist. She reminds me of Devin. Um, and she's from J China or Japan, mm -hmm. or she's Taiwanese. I can't remember. Um, but uh, she's like a kind of a big deal right now. Yeah, like she's not big like. Do Taylor you know her Smith. name? What's her name? Oh god, okay. I wish I knew because she sounds great. She's making jazz popular again. Cool. Like actually, nice. And she's doing all these cool little jazz numbers and extremely popular. Large number of teenage girls like to go to her concerts. Um, gosh, I wish I knew her name because I actually really like the music. But that, that's my point is that she has extremely sophisticated chord progressions and very interesting music to me. Mm -hmm. And is still amassing a teenage following. So it's great. I I don't know. I I think that it doesn't. There's not. A, there's not a complexity pop music situation like they're not at odds at each other with each other mm -hmm. I, I really don't think that that's the case i mean i know that the top 40 like what's happening in top 40 is definitely overly simplistic but that doesn't mean people like it more it just means it's very exposed it's what's taken off you know i like everybody loves bohemian rhapsody right yeah you realize how incredibly complex that music is? Super complex. Oh, it's crazy. But it's still simple at the same time. There's is not too it? much. It's not. It, it's like there's not too much going on in the background. It's like whenever it's the the choir set yeah. parts, it's like just the choir and guitar yeah. and and drums or something. Yeah. Like you can be complex and still keep it simple. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah. So that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, define complexity. What I mean is chords that have more than four notes in them. Right. You know. Yeah. Um. And that is happening in music and can still be pop. Yeah. I think. To me. We'll see. Just depends. Just depends on what people are into. But yeah. 
But, uh, all right, we've gone an hour and 10 minutes. Wow, is it dad joke time? It's dad joke time. It's dad joke time. I know that you love dad these. Dad joke and time. And you can't get enough of them. I love dad joke time. So we got, we can't, we got to do this for you, Donnie. <laughs> no, 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 I got to go first. <laughs> okay, go. All right. You know what? Let's, let's do this. Let's try not to laugh. Okay. No laughing. All right, so I was wondering why this frisbee. God, <laughs> you already lost. <laughs> it's just your face. Okay, starting starting now. All right. Oh, you, do, you do this like this stare. <laughs> and I can't. Okay. Okay. I was wondering why this frisbee just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. and then it hit me. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> so I like that one a lot. All right. No no laughing. Okay. Please, sir, I want some more. Please, sir. Okay. Ah, oh, where did that one go? Okay, uh, what do you call... What do you call a paper airplane that can't fly? Origami. Stationary. Oh my god. That's rude, bud. What? That's a rude thing you just did. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh God! Go ahead. What? Why does uh? Why does Snoop Dogg always carry an umbrella? I have no idea. For drizzle. That's pretty bad. This is very bad. Yeah. All right. Uh. There is no climate change or global warming. I'm gonna say it again because I kind of fell over the word global. There is no climate change or global warming. It's just autumn identifying as summer. Oh my God. I think that's kind of offensive. <laughs> Do you, do you know why? But uh, I didn't write it. Do you know why? Uh, what's that gym? Which over one? over at uh, 101st and wherever, on Memorial. What's uh, that? Life gym? Fit or uh, Life Fitness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you know why it closed down? Why? It, it didn't work out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does anybody have a joke about libraries? No. They're long overdue. <laughs> oh, God. I don't even know why I was struggling to say it. It's not that funny. Man, okay, can't read kid from last week? Yeah. Still can't read. I thought he was faking it. Really can't read. Breaks my heart. That is sad. I have full on have a fifth grader in my class that cannot read. I have no idea how this happened. That is crazy. Wow, sorry, that's bumming everybody out. <laughs> bumming people out during the dad joke segment. Why did the why did the car get a flat tire? Why? Because there was a fork in the road. That'll do it. Fork in the road. Don't drive over that fork. Get a flat tire. Get a flat tire. <laughs> How much cocaine can Sh uh, Charlie Sheen do? Oh. Uh. How much cocaine can Charlie Sheen do? As much as he wants. Enough to kill two and a half men. Oh my god, it's what killed two and a half men. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Did I ever tell you this like this this sausage joke? No. That I have. No. What is it? 
It's the worst. When's the worst time to have a heart attack? Oh. <laughs> Probably when the inspector's coming by. During a game of charades. Oh, yeah, no one believes you. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> what do you call a cold puppy? A cold dog? Yeah. Was that it? No, a chili dog. Oh, God. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> what do you call a sad cup of coffee? Depresso. Oh, that's one of the other kids was saying that. At your school? Yes. He said that joke? Yeah. Literally, the, yeah, a kid said that joke to me. And did you like it? Yeah, he was right next to the kid going, abortion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's do two more. What did one hat say to the other? I've heard this one. I'm trying to remember what the punchline is. You go around back, I'll stay up front. No, <laughs> very close. One hat, one hat said to the other, "You wait here. I'm going on ahead." Oh my god! <sighs> what is a narcissist's favorite drink? Narcissist's favorite drink? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. A mimosa. A mimosa. I see. Did you hear about the guy who invented the knock knock joke? No. He won the Nobel Prize. Because there's no bell. <laughs> Who's there? A bad joke. A bad joke who? A bad joke who? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> My brain's not working. Um, what do you call a 400-pound alcoholic? Wow, 400-pounder, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't know. A heavy drinker. Oh my god, bro. It's a big one. Yeah. That's like two of these. <laughs> All right, one more. One more each. What did the buffalo say to his son when we dropped him off at school? I, I don't know. Bison. <laughs> Bison. Bison! Goodbye, son. <laughs> what pronouns does a non-binary owl use? Non-binary owl? Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase this question. What pronouns does a non-binary barn owl use? Who? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it that's what owls say. Because <laughs> that's what owls say, yep. What does the owl say? <laughs> what does the ooh. owl say? Ooh, ooh. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. What kind of music scares balloons? What kind of music scares balloons? Mm -hmm. Metal. Pop music. Oh, freaking. Metal, because metal's sharp and pointy and pops balloons. I get it. I get it. But a balloon's life ends. I get it. You know what? Pops. I quit. I quit this podcast. <laughs> I hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> when a mushroom orders carry out, what is it called? Shroom service. 